let's talk about Venger version 2. So Venger 1 came out, when was it? Last May? Uh, it's been out for a while now and um, it's fantastic. <laughs> It's the most extensible uh, e-commerce framework out there using a modern tech stack and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go on about it, but Venger 2 is going to take it to the whole next level. There's a lot of things coming. Uh, if you want to take a look at what we've got planned, then here is our roadmap. There are a lot of items on there. Yeah, this is going to put Venger in a whole new league in terms of what you can build with it, the ease of use, the user experience, the developer experience, everything. All right, today uh, I wanna to talk to you about one particular feature which I've been working on. And that is the one at the top of the list right here. You can see it's the only one that's marked as extra large and it is really big and it's a lot of work and it's really complex. And that is improve, uh, improving the multi-vendor marketplace support. And we have an issue for this, which was created about a year ago. And as you can see, it's a really long issue. A lot of people have opinions and feedback on this feature or this set of features, should I say, because it encompasses a whole lot of functionality. And um, we've been chipping away at this. And over the past few weeks, I've really um, gotten down to work on this. I've been uh, doing lots of design work, uh, like proof of concepts and really e exploration, um, doing you know throwing lots of things away i had lots of attempts that were not quite right i had to go back to the drawing board start again and finally now i think i've arrived at something that works really well and that's what i want to show you in this video but first of all let's just clear up what we mean by multi-vendor and marketplace so we have two related uh, concepts you've got a uh, multi-vendor and you've got multi-tenant now, multi-tenant is something like, let's say I own a business and we have several brands and each brand has its own shop. Um, in Venger, we could use channels to put a, make a channel for each brand and it, they can have separate inventory and orders and customers and so on. We can split things up that way, multi-tenant. Now, multi-tenant is something that Venger already covers quite well. There are already companies who are hosting a whole bunch of uh, different, completely unrelated uh, storefronts on one Venger installation as a multi-tenant setup. So that's fine. Um, I'm sure there's things we can improve even more on multi-tenant, but the other, the, the thing I want to talk about is marketplace now a marketplace has some similarities because you do have also a number of different sellers but they're independent and uh, a customer can come along and order products from several sellers all at once in one single order uh, so you should think about things like um, etsy or amazon marketplace where um, one single order from the customer's point of view is actually uh, contains the combined inventory from many different sellers and this is where things get really complex because then you need to deal with things like how do you split up the order so that each seller only sees the inventory that, they're, that, they, that they are contributing towards that order. Uh, you also have to split the payments. You also have to split the shipping, uh, make sure all those calculations work correctly. Um, often there's like a platform fee. So the actual uh, marketplace platform can take a percentage of the sale from each of those sellers, uh, depending on you know what proportion of the, the um, total they fulfilled. Then of course you've got when you split the shipping, you've got to make sure that uh, you can track the fulfillment separately and then update the overall status of the order so the customer can see which order lines have been shipped and which have not yet been shipped and so on. So there's a lot of complexity and um, this is what I've been working on. This is what I want to show you. And why is this issue so commented upon? Why is it such a long thread? Well, the thing is, um, right now there is really if you want to build a multi uh, vendor marketplace you don't have many options uh, especially if you want to build it on something open source where you can actually own the platform that you're making because you've got to understand that something like this is so complex you can't just sign up with shopify or big commerce and build an application like this it just doesn't work it's not set up that way so uh, a lot of companies are looking to build a multi-vendor marketplace they don't want to build from scratch, but they want to have a solid e-commerce starting point to build on top of. And that's where Venger comes in. Uh, over the last year and more, we've had many people arriving in the community looking to build an application like this. And while it is possible right now, 
it's not exactly easy. And what we want to do in Venger 2 is make it really easy to make it uh, put all the, uh, the, the data model in place, all the APIs that you need to build a real first class multi vendor marketplace on top of Venger. Let me show you a demo. Okay, so here we are in Venger. I'm logged in as the super admin, and this is like a fresh install with all the test data that you know and love, uh, laptop, balloon chair, skipping rope, and so on. Anyway, so uh, nothing really has been done with this. The only thing I've done is I've removed the shipping methods that come as standard. And I want you to notice something else here. Over here, we see something new, sellers. This is a new concept which is coming in Venger version two. By default, there is a default seller, um, it just has a name. This connected account ID is something that will come in later. It's used to help split payments between different sellers. But by default, you have a channel and a channel is linked with a seller. And we just have a default channel and a default seller. So what I'm going to show you here is like an MVP, a minimum viable product uh, for a multi-vendor marketplace. And I've been working hard, as I say, on putting together the fundamental data model changes and the APIs that we will need to implement this kind of application. So let's go over to our con config file. So this is just the Venger config that I use when I'm developing. And you can see here there is a new plugin. This is a multi-vendor plugin. And I'm initializing it with a uh, platform fee of 10% and um, an SKU for that platform fee, which is just fee. And we'll see why that matters later. Let's take a look at this plugin itself. So this is actually just in, uh, it's in the Venger Mono repo. You can go and look at this once I've, once I've pushed it. Um, I'll include a link in the description. I always wanted to do that. Link in the description. Um, this multi, here's the multi-vendor plugin. I've documented it somewhat thoroughly so you can have a read through of this but this is just a standard Venger plugin and um, there's a bunch of different config and I think the one that's really of most interest is a brand new strategy that's come in Venger 2 which basically unlocks this whole feature set which is the uh, seller strategy order seller strategy we can look at the definition of it which is pretty simple it's got like three methods and they're all optional um, and here is our concrete implementation called multi-vendor seller strategy. And in brief, one method allows us to split up order lines and assign them to a particular seller's channel. Another method is responsible for actually splitting the order into separate sub orders, one for each seller. And the third method is responsible for other things such as handling splitting of the payments, um, adding platform fee surcharges and so on. And that's the basic kind of shape of this new API. We also have one other uh, API, which is important, which is called the shipping line assignment strategy. So this is if we want to add uh, multiple shipping methods to an order, for example, one shipping method for each seller, then we need a way to be able to know which order line is associated with which shipping method. So we, when we create our fulfillments and so on, we know what should go in where by default. Uh, and we can also estimate the shipping costs and then split up that shipping as well when we split the order. So that's what the um, plugin looks like. Oh, one more thing, I've set up a resolver which allows us to register a new seller. And when we register a new seller, we're basically gonna create a channel for that seller. We'll create a seller, create a channel, associate them together, create a, an administrator and a role. So uh, that seller is able to log into the admin UI and administer their channel. And we'll create a special shipping method just for them as well. So it we'll just package up all that functionality into one mutation. So I've got the server running here and let's jump over here and we'll create a seller. So we're going to register a new. So we're going to register a new seller. Um, the shop is Bob's Parts, and we supply the shop name and some administrator details. So let's run that. I'm not authorized to perform this action, so let me log in as the super admin first. Okay, and let's try that again. So that seems to have worked. Let's jump back into the admin UI. We'll see we've got a new channel here, Bob's Parts. It's assigned to this new seller, which is here. 
we've got an account ID which was automatically generated and we should have a shipping method for Bob's parts and the nice thing is is that Bob can now come along and log in and have access to his admin panel. So now I'm logged in as Bob on that channel. Um, got no products yet, let's make a product. So let's, let's say we've got 100 in stock. Okay, we created that. I'm just gonna note the ID of the um, product variant for later, 89. Okay, so we've got Bob's uh, shop with a gear stick. I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna create another seller going to log out. I'm going to log in as Shelly. And let's create a product for her as well. She's going to sell a graphics card. Let's make that, oh, $90, I guess. Price has come down since the crypto crash. Okay, and the ID of that product variant <laughs> should be 90. Okay. This is good. I'm going to now log back in as a super admin so we can have a, an overview of what's going on now. So if I look here, I can see um, in, as well as all the, the default uh, products on the default channel, we've now got the uh, stuff from Bob and from Shelly. I can jump over to their channels and see that those products are there as well. So now we're going to place a multi-vendor order. I've got no uh, storefront for this, so I'm going to do it all through the API. So first thing I'm going to do is create a mutation, and I'm going to add a couple of things to the order. So I'm going to log in right here, and then I'm going to add, it was 89 and it was 90, and we're going to add those two to the order. Okay, so here we are, here's the order. So at the moment it just looks like any normal order. We see the two items and we see the customer. Next we'll set the shipping address. Okay, and after that we can query for the eligible shipping methods. Okay, so this is the interesting part. So now you can see that the eligible shipping methods are uh, come they come back for for Bob's and for Shelley's shops, and this is now something new in Venger Two, which will be uh, available. This API, when we uh, set the uh, shipping method, then we can pass an array of shipping method IDs, and it will apply all of those shipping methods, and it will split them up using that strategy that I told you about before. So let's say. Mutation, assign, shipping, set, set order shipping method, shipping method ID. And now this is going to be an array with three and four. Just get the ID. Okay. And if we jump over to that order again, refresh it. All right, we can see we've got those two shipping methods now added here. And now we're going to check out and we'll transition to the arranging payment state and then we'll add a payment to the order. And we're going to pass this connected payment method. This is uh, something that the uh, multi-vendor plugin creates. Uh, I can show you it right here. Payment methods, connected payment method. And this is like uh, just a dummy, a simulation of a, an API like Stripe Connect or Molly Connect. These are special payment uh, services which uh, specifically cater to multi-vendor marketplaces and they, they allow you to split payments, uh, collect uh, platform fees and so on. So we've got like a simple kind of simulation of this, just a, a dummy uh, version. Uh, but this is what the um, checkout will be using now. So let's send that got an error there so I'm gonna quickly pause and fix the bug and then resume this video
Okay, I think I fixed it. Let's try again. What? What? Let's try that again. Debug. As you can see, it's uh, unstable. <laughs> it's brand new, so there are bugs, but we'll get through it. So what's here? No. Okay, gonna pause it again. Okay, <laughs> third time lucky, huh? I think I found something. I fixed a bug. I fixed the bug. Let's see. Did I fix it? Oh, let us remove the breakpoints. Let's turn that off. We're not debugging anymore. I'm very confident this is just gonna work. Let's see. Good. It took a long time because I'm running in a debug mode. Um, anyway, we're in the default channel. Let's look at the orders now. Okay, this is great. So we see here the aggregate order, 170. Um, we see two seller orders which have been split out of the aggregate order and uh, $102.60, $50.40. Let's go in here. If we look at the aggregate order, we see uh, that it's made up of these two orders. We can drill down and look at each individual one. The breadcrumbs show us where we are, that this order is actually a part of this overall aggregate order. This is the one from Shelly's shop, just the graphics card. Uh, we've taken 10% plat platform fee. Um, the payment has been created. It's linked to the um, the group payment, which is co copying the model that Stripe Connect use. Let's look at the other order from Bob's. Is uh, the product from Bob's? Just Bob shipping here. Um, his platform fee. The payment connected again to the same group. And um, the cool thing is that these are linked, so. Let's say Shelly logs in and fulfills the order. Creates a fulfillment, marks it as shipped. Now, if we go over to the aggregate order, we can see it's partially shipped now because one of the um, seller orders that it contains has been shipped. If Bob comes along and creates a fulfillment as well and ships it, we'll see that the aggregate order is now shipped. We can do the same thing with the delivery. It's now partially, partially delivered and Bob delivers and the order's now complete. It worked. So this is, as I said, this is a, an MVP, minimum viable product. This is just like a proof of concept more than anything that this uh, whole architecture that has been written actually works and can handle all the parts of the multi-vendor workflow. Right now it's looking good, but where we're at is uh, I'm going to release a new version on the next, next NPM tag and I invite you to try it out. This uh, whole plugin that I've been using is in the mono repo. The link will be in the, in the description. So yeah, check it out. If you've got this kind of use case, you can start working on it and give feedback because, you know, I've probably missed a few things here and there. Part of all this complexity, there's probably some things I didn't quite think of. Um, so I need your help to find out those things. And before we do the final version two release, let's get all of these, these details smoothed out and have like a really uh, unparalleled support for multi-vendor applications. Okay, see you soon.